Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to Math Antics. In our last video, we learned how to solve basic algebraic equations that only had one addition or one subtraction operation. In this video, we'll focus on equations that have only one multiplication or one division operation. Now before we see some examples, do you remember the key strategy for solving an equation with an unknown value in it? Yep. We have to use arithmetic to rearrange the equation so that the unknown is all by itself on one side of the equal sign. And the most important thing to keep in mind while rearranging equations is that whenever we do something to one side of an equation, we have to do the same thing to the other side. Or else the other side might get jealous. Hey, how come he got a cookie and I didn't? Actually, it's to keep the equation in balance. Now remember from the last video, in equations where a number was being added to an unknown, we had to subtract that number from both sides. But when a number was being subtracted from the unknown, we had to add that number to both sides. And that makes sense because, as we learned in the video called What is Arithmetic, addition and subtraction are inverse operations. They undo each other. Well, guess what? Multiplication and division are also inverse operations, so we can use them to undo each other too. If an unknown is being multiplied by a number, to undo that we need to divide both sides by that number. But if an unknown is being divided by a number, to undo that we need to multiply both sides by that number. Now don't worry if that sounds a little confusing right now. It'll make a lot more sense after you've seen a few examples. Let's start with this one. 3x equals 15. Uh, excuse me, I think you forgot something. I mean, didn't you say that these equations were going to have multiplication or division in them? But I don't see any arithmetic operator at all in this equation. Actually, I think you forgot something that we learned in the video What is Algebra? You did watch that, right? Oh, oh sure, sure, of course. But I, you know, I, I just remembered <laughs> I have something I got to do. I'll, I'll be right back. Well, I'm sure you remember that multiplication is the default operation in algebra. So when you see a number and a symbol right next to each other like this, with no operation between them, it means they're being multiplied. So 3x is the same as 3 times x. Oh, and just a side note, since in multiplication the order of the numbers doesn't matter, you could switch the order and write x3 but it's customary to always list the known number first and the unknown number second. All right, but we need to solve this equation, right? That means we need to get the unknown, x, all by itself on one side of the equal sign. Right now, the x is not by itself because it's being multiplied by three. So to undo that operation, we need to divide that side by three. In algebra, we almost always write division in fraction form. So to divide this side by 3, we just write a fraction line under it, and we put a 3 below the line. There. This means 3 times x divided by 3. Ah, but don't forget our rule for rearranging equations. We have to do the exact same thing to the other side to keep the equation balanced. That's better. Now both sides are being divided by 3. The next step is to simplify. The 3 on the top and the 3 on the bottom on this side cancel because 3 divided by 3 would just be 1. This is just like canceling common factors when you're simplifying a fraction. That leaves us with just x on this side. And on the other side, we have 15 divided by 3, which simplifies to 5. There, we've solved our equation by changing it into the simplified form x equals 5. Let's try another one just like that. 12x equals 96. In this problem, the unknown is being multiplied by 12. So to get the x all by itself, we're going to need to divide both sides of the equation by 12. On the first side, the 12 on top and the 12 on bottom cancel out, leaving just x on that side. And on the other side, we need to divide 96 by 12. You might be able to do that by memory, but if not, you can use a calculator to divide. 96 divided by 12 is 8. So in this problem, x equals 8. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Are you ready to try a division problem now? Here we have x divided by 2 equals 3. Now, when you see division written like this, from left to right with the traditional division symbol, I want you to rewrite it using the fraction form for division. 
And that's because it's much easier to cancel common factors and simplify your equation when you use the fraction form. Now that we have it rewritten, let's solve it. We can see that the unknown is not by itself because it's being divided by two. How can we get rid of or undo that division? Yep, we can undo division with multiplication. So we need to multiply both sides of the equation by two. Instead of writing the multiplication sign, I'm using the parentheses notation that we learned about in the video called what is algebra. Remember, the multiplication is just implied. Now to simplify. On the first side, the two on top cancels out the two on the bottom, since two divided by two is just one. And I know what some of you are thinking. How is there a two on top? The two looks like it's really in the middle, kind of like how a mixed number looks. That's true. But don't confuse this with a mixed number. Mixed numbers involve addition, but the parentheses let you know that the two and the x over two are being multiplied since multiplication is the default operation. Okay, so it's not a mixed number, but how is the two on top? Well, do you remember how you can turn any number into a fraction just by making one the bottom number? That means that two is the same as two over one. Ah, now you can see that the two really is on top. It's just that we don't usually show the one on the bottom. All right then, so the twos cancel, leaving the x all by itself on this side. And on the other side, we have three times two, which is just six. So in this problem, x equals six. That's not too hard either. Let's try another one. x over 10 equals 15. In this problem, since the x is being divided by 10, to get it by itself, we're gonna to need to multiply both sides of the equation by 10. On the first side, the tens cancel, leaving x all by itself. And on the other side, we have 15 times 10, which is 150. So our answer is x equals 150. Great, that's how you solve simple equations where an unknown is being multiplied by a number or divided by a number. But just like with subtraction in the last video, with division, there's a tricky variation that I need to tell you about. What if you have an equation where a number is being divided by an unknown? Since division does not have the commutative property, x over four is not the same thing as four over x. So what do we do if the unknown is on the bottom, like in this problem? Four over x equals two. Well, your first thought might be to multiply both sides by four. But that won't help us here, because both of the fours would be on top, so they wouldn't cancel each other out. Instead, what we need to do is multiply both sides by x. Watch what happens then. The x's on this side of the equation will cancel. Yep, you can cancel unknowns and variables exactly like you can regular numbers. That will leave us with just four on this side of the equation. And on the other side, we have two times x, or, 2x. True, that didn't solve the equation, but it did get rid of the tricky x on the bottom, and it changed our equation into a problem that we already know how to solve. Now, to get the x all by itself, we just need to divide both sides of the equation by two. On the first side, we have four divided by two, which is two. And on the other side, the two over two cancels, and we're left with just x. So now we know that x equals two. Okay. So now that you've watched these first three math antics algebra videos, you should be able to solve any simple one-step equation involving addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, right? Well, not unless you practice. To really learn how to solve equations, you have to try a lot of problems on your own to make sure that you really understand how to do it. And if you're still confused, try re-watching these videos a few times since they cover so much information. As always, Thanks for watching Math Antics, and I'll see you next time. Learn more at mathantics.com. Hey, I watched that video you mentioned. Hello? Hello? Where am I? <laughs>